It was a common occurrence, no matter which species. A dysfunctional government failing to address violent, chaotic, and often complex issues. Factionalism, separatism, class riots, religious wars, it didn't matter. In the end, they all called the same group for assistance. Victor Corporation. Nobody knows for sure why humans out of all species dominated the mercenary business, or as they like to call it, private security industry. It couldn't have been for any physical reason. Humans were incredibly average. Average height, average strength, average accommodation to gravity. They should have been another slightly dysfunctional, hypocritical and yet peace-wanting civilization like so many others. But they aren't. When one looks at their past, not only does it start to make sense, but one begins to feel compassion. Humans, if you can believe it, were once the most lively species, optimistic and hopeful for the future ahead of them. When they landed on the planet of Lonsk, they imagined what could be possible. A new leaf for humanity, one where they could rebuild their civilization knowing the mistakes and flaws of their ancestors. It should have been an innocuous history. Then their first war happened with the Spectalians. Angry that a startup species could arrive on their backyard. Then their second, again with the Spectalians, angry that they lost the first. And then they fought the Crossin, twice. The Crossin dispersed much NBC material that still persists to this day, forcing humans to wear NBC suits. Many aliens haven't seen them without. They fought their own civil war, one of the bloodiest in the history of intraspecies conflicts. Then the Frontier War happened, which, for better or for worse, exposed them to the whole alien community. Some persons may think that it is because of these wars that humans have dominated the industry. After all, Victal Corporation has its origins before the Second Croissant War. But I would argue that these types of companies do not exist because of these wars, but rather the human condition. Besides the average physicality, humans are not like you or I, or many other species. If you can believe this, they don't find solace and camaraderie between members of their own species. Instead, they distrust and doubt their own kind, what they see as a potential threat. Potential threats need analysing. In the end, this causes humans to analyse anything and everything, since what they consider to not be threats is oftentimes only their close family. Even though they currently are unified under one government, though so federally managed as it is, Officials still perceive even their own co-workers and acquaintances to be potential threats. In fact, revealed in the Lonskan leak some years back, the federal state of Lonsk had drawn up plans on how to invade and incapacitate every single one of its oblasts. This information shocked the alien community, but the FSL citizens shrugged and went on with their day. For them, this was expected. The private military companies, defense apparatuses and cybernetic warfare appliances again, as they call it, that have sprung up and dominated the various industries are not because of some inherent aggression or intellectual prowess, though they are quite clever for a species. It is because they are deeply mistrustful of their own kind, to the point where at times in human history, the government doesn't trust members of its own military, and this leads them to develop weaponry and PMCs to a point where, realistically, no other alien civilization comes close. But this cannot be the sole reason. The humans may have good military appliances and competent PMCs, but this alone cannot justify calling for humans that are so far away. After all, it would be much cheaper to call for local forces with comparable gear. So why do all the alien governments call for human PMCs? Of all those wars mentioned, the humans won all of them. Every single one. And for the former wars, and to some extent the later wars, we cannot point to the human military for being the reason. Remember, humanity's origins, when they landed on Lunsk, they had no military. Rather, they won because of, once again, the human condition. Besides being mistrustful of their own, humans have another characteristic that separates them from the rest of us. Their juxtaposition of logic and emotion. While this at first may seem like a weakness, and in many instances it is, it ultimately fuels their actions. For example, I will provide two real scenarios. The Oglo are a very logical species, and they pride themselves because of it. However, because they are logical, both the commanders and soldiers are hesitant to take action. The commanders are hesitant due to their want to know all the facts before coming to a decision. 
The soldiers are hesitant due to their doubt of the leadership and oftentimes the reason for the conflict. What happens is, despite having some of the best technology in the known universe, they are poor in actual conflict. In contrast to this are the Sails. They are a very emotional species, and again they pride themselves because of it. However, because they are emotional, both the commanders and soldiers do counterproductive actions. The commanders put personal glory above actual facts, and oftentimes create needless death of their soldiers because of it. The soldiers, oftentimes fed charged propaganda, commit war crimes against their enemy. Since humans have both, they can see the bigger picture, while also not forgetting the situation in front of them. This allows them to take quick action, as well as to break down situations with nuance. That is why you see Cohenstein PMC fighting in Yukat's autonomous region against the Separatists. That is why you see Life and Co PMC maintaining peace in the previously war-torn planet of the Celts. That is why Victol PMC is fighting the rebels instead of our army. Upon completely reading the pamphlet, the Victile contractor ripped it to shreds. The contractor's comrade noticed. Read that rubbish too? Is this what aliens really think of us? The comrade shrugged. Really don't know? Really don't care? All I know is that I get my bonus after I kill three more. What are those things called again? The Victile contractor thought for a few moments before remembering. Elves? Yes, elves, said the comrade before he tilted his head in puzzlement. Why do they call them elves anyway? They're anything but. They look more like if a fly and a crocodile had a baby together. This time the contractor shrugged. Who knows? Just the slang during the frontier war, I think. By the way, what's a crocodile? Boom! The contractor and his comrade aimed their rifles down at the source of the noise. An elven sniper was hiding under the city rubble. The victor contractor was about to take the shot when... BANG! Smoke fumed out of his comrade's weapon as the elven sniper's remains were lost to the wind. The comrade then started to laugh profusely and then spoke to his friend. You know, that was a tough one. Might have taken it down, might have not. Job weapons are so benign like that, no? Now chuckling all the while, the comrade walked to where the elven sniper was before he suddenly stopped walking and chuckling at once. Hey, are you okay? said the contractor. I just realised something. Yeah? The comrade turned around and faced his friend. Since I use a jolt weapon, I'm not going to be able to take a photo for proof of my bonus. That's bullshit. Hey, you can always collect the individual flakes and scotch tape them together. <laughs> I wish. And so, the contractor and his comrade continued to walk the elven streets, looking for any potential survivors.